ông quay cho ông chúng tôi nhập các to cái chăm ba can để thi sạm la cà tạo cao lục kiện sạm la cà được ngày đi ông nhập ra to sẽ đáp được cái cam sạ dày steel header để nâng xuôi đến đầu đời đồng nàng thả về nhà lúc này sẽ có một thiết là đi cam bây giờ thành lập tiếp ở vật miền ở vật miền phía kia nó bọc cua lại ông nhập ra còn chưa chỗ rùm được không cái chăm la cà sạm la cà ngày đi Sông cực lục thiên, xâm rạp xạm nạc ca thường ngày ní, cực lục hiệu kỳ tiền ơ nơi rừng đầy ní, miên vọt tầm miên. Sông cực sông cò đài lái, lộ nguồn chí, miên vọt tầm miên nằm tục không khuôn đài nơi bị khẳng cao bằng tục xạm nạc ca ní, tam chức đây xâm rạch ở bó ơn chân gà xa lạc bốn, đòi mù lạc hết bánh hà sốc hiệp. Nơi thường ngày ní, nâng bằng to xa nạp xa khai cam xạ xây Stephen Hedder hay lộ miên vọt tầm miên rụi hai nông biết cả chuyện từ đầm nàng thạch nhá là mày mình to cả tăng thằng nội đánh đầu cho buộc sạ xây steel header xong chơi Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Mr. President. Your Honours, may it please you. Good morning to my fellow council. And good morning again to you, Mr. Hedder. I'd like to start, please, by asking some clarification questions in relation to your testimony towards the end of yesterday. You will recall that you confirmed an extract from E3-1-7-1 in relation to the refugee interviews in 1980 and reference to the interviewee Nguyen, also known as Long, the passage of drying up the people from the enemy being part of a long standing plan and that being the relevant slogan. In relation to that, you said that you heard it from many people over many years, and that you heard it before April 1975 on radio broadcasts. And it's the radio broadcasts I'd like to ask some further questions about. Can you help on what in what context this phrase, dry up the people from the enemy, was being broadcast. What I mean by that is what was the subject matter, what was the context in which this phrase was being used. Um, it, it referred ຄືນີ້ຢູ່ຕໍ່ຮອບສະຖານະພຽບແລະ Yotie routinely put it from areas to the delivery of the general delivery of the general This was presented as being voluntary. Please leave the lead from the general delivery of ពីតំបន់ដែលកាន់កាប់ដោយខ្មាំងហើយឲ្យចូលទៅតំបន់
คณะจำนวนใหญ่ทำบรรทัดนู้คือในใหญ่จงชนะมาปอนปมบุญรอยเจ็ดสับประหุดอลทุสวัตชนะแปดสับเปียทักกาจุ่มเดียวหายเปียทักดอกจีจุนจุบนอซอนนิดใดยังเคยท้าตามเด็กชุ่มช้ำเด็กชุ่มบัดสมเพียนนู้คือยังกาชมเลียนุกธาเจริญแต่เพื่อหลังโดยการบังคับบังคับยังอาจยุ่งตระกูลธาเนตเดลตัวกาบัญชบัญชูตามโยบายเอาเชนปีดมบอลขมังตระมันดมดอกนุกคือคืออาจธาก่อแต่แต่ยุ่งตระกูลตระกาการขับโดยอยู่ที่ตระดมบอลนุห้อยกีกีดอกจีจุนกรมห้อยกีบรรจุนตัวดมบอลดมดอกดาวทัศน์ครองกาครุกครองหรือบอกไม่กระหอมบ้างอ๋อจุดประสงค์ดมลึกลูกสตีลเฮดเดอร์มันติดท่าอ่องอย่างเดียวก็หันจีลูกเมื่อพอเราตะเคียนกำคือในยี่อ้อยอ่องอย่างเดียวสับยังสมัยลูกสมรู้ในเอริยาบทบรรลุลงในท่าลูกชลัยในยี่นี่คือในยี่อ้อยอ่องอย่างเดียวสับมาในท่ากาบังฮายในการในยี่ที่มุกนั่นคือใบมุกมุกอ่องอย่างเดียวมันก็ใบเจ้าการสมทรพิงสมลูกยุลเดชลูกตุลูลเอเดียบอดนงการนิยนั่นคือนิยายอองยิบเรสดับประสมเจอยิบโตลูกดำนางทาร์เป็นยังดำนางทาร์เป็นยังคิมจองซูสมนัวตุลูลูกสาสัยอัมพีเอ็ดก้าแต่ลูกบานดังต่อหลังอัมพีครองดงหนึ่งกำปองชามแล้วในยุคนี้ยี่ปีแค่กำปองชามโลกยี่ปีแค่กันยาชนะมาพร้อมบรอยเช็ดสับใบในเรื่องเกี่ยวกับแต่ต้องตัวหนึ่งการชมเลี้ยงในขนมกำปองชามโลกยี่ปีแค่กำปองชามแต่ลูกบานตัวตัวพอมีเอาไว้ไอ้ปีแค่ดอลจุนพี่ถ้าตาการชมเลี้ยงดอยสมัครเช็ดหรือก็ชิการชมเลี้ยงดอยบุกคอมได้รู้ตีชมลายมุนมุนเปดากีฮาวฮันกีออยเนตถึงออนุจ่าเฉยนุคือกีฮาวทาสมัครสเพียบเนตนุตินุขยมันบานนุตินุตีบันตอปีเมียนฮัตกาบาดบาดสันเชนุดองวิ่งกึธาเมียนฮัตกาจับเพียบขยมบานตัดดอลเพียบปันแตนุตินุขยมบาดบานเตอร์ตี I mean, my recollection is that some people describe the need for the other people to be forcibly removed, and there were some who eventually managed to return. While others describe not only the need for the other people to be forcibly removed, but also the need for the other people to be forcibly removed. But the need for the other people to be forcibly removed. ถ้าคูดเตอร์เฉยเนี่ยคล้าดัลจีเชื่อมนุษย์ดัลเพียคลุนเพียซักปีกลายมวยเตอร์กลายมวยคันน้องเฮยโจลมาตีรุ่งแทนตุ้งแชมป์ดอยมูลแทนมวยชมวนคันน้องเฮยก็ดูเมียนฉันเตะจองตลอดเตอร์กันหลายดาวเลยคือจิตรกับนาดูกันหลายดาวเลยคือมอกนวดวิ่งอันนี้คือตามเด็กชมชมชมสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสมุนสม
Well, when, when I arrived here, the area around the town was effectively deserted. So I said there were people who had come to see how they evaded the evacuation. But they managed to hide themselves or hide themselves from the evacuation. Khi bạn đọc luôn tranh thì Hàm Đà Ca chấm đi hơi lẹ luôn rồi có khói mốc của bạn mọi người tìm được. Khảo phía này đứng cứ mình mình là nào thì nó về đây khi ông tất đó là trong bàn khơi xạ sọc đồn chi mình miền bật sông hơi mình miền nẹ nà nó thì nó thì miền tài xạ sọc thì mình miền nẹ. Nà nở ruột nở lử đồng bọn được trong tất đó là lại được trong tất đó thì ti kerong hai nung wat ku the te kemian manu nau virtually bat ku mul tu kuen the te ot min na na nau de my final question yesterday was about the evacuation of Phnom Penh of Phnom Penh bat ka chum lieh ti Phnom Penh hai yeung ban ni ye if you remember pong's notebook can I ask you please, with your folders, I don't know where they are, sorry, they're not in the back. Mr. President, can I please give Mr. Head of the folders which we've had in safe custody overnight? Mr. President, can I please give Mr. Head of the folders which we've had in safe custody overnight? Mr. President, can I please give Mr. Head of the folders which we've had in safe custody overnight? Mr. Header, can I ask you please to look at file four? Tab one. 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 Section leading to footnote 17. This is to remind everyone E190.1.398. And can I ask please that all references today when I give a document are shown on the screen. Also to be abolished into the worker peasants. As part of this uprooting socialist revolution, were members of what the official CPK class analysis designated separate or special class types that did not fit neatly into its broader class scheme of feudalists. Bourgeoisie, petty bourgeoisie, peasants and workers. In addition to intellectuals, these other class types included Republican soldiers and police, Buddhist monks, and all nationalities, brackets, chuntir, i.e. national minorities. Footnote 17 then references two DK cadre notebooks, and references are given from the DC CAM collection of KNH0010 and KNH071. So again, can I ask please something about these DK cadre notebooks when you first saw them? And um, again, just a little bit more detail. This again goes back to a time 
ដែលជាសភោកំណត់ដៃសូសាយទីស្គូលកោពីបុកស៍ដែលជាសភោសរសេរមកពីសង្គមចាស់ such as revolutionary flags or contemporary flags that are not very contemporary flags ខ្មែរហើយគេបកប្រែទៅជាភាសាអង្គ្លេសហើយនឹងខ្ញុំផ្អែកលើក្លំសារនោះដើម្បីអនុស្សាហ៊ុយអាយ <coughs> 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 ແລະຄຳສົມບັນຊູນອາຍກະສານີ້ is your memory refreshed by looking at the first page? It's a transcript again of this interview. Can I start by taking you to your page 4? This is English ERN 0035-0203. French 0044-1416. And Khmer 0037-9483-8. If we look at page 4 on yours, Mr. Heather, about two-thirds down the page, there's a sentence beginning in July 1975, I went to liberate. Do you have that? I'm now going to read it in full. Uh, in July 1975, I went to liberate the whole territory, and I was assigned a new task serving as Deputy Secretary of Sector 21 and Head of the Sector 21 Committee in charge of economics, administration, education and organisation. Again, can you confirm that that's an accurate recording of what was said to you in this interview? Um, with the caveat that this is not my translation of the Portuguese language, can I please take you to the next now let's go to the second period starting from 1973 to the 18th of April 1975. During this period, Pol Pot reformed his policy 
The first thing was that they raised class issues and class struggle in the society. They mentioned five classes, such as workers, farmers, petty bourgeoisie, feudalists and capitalists. Among the five classes, they valued only worker and farmer class, while other classes were totally ignored and oppressed. Even middle-class farmers, upper-class farmers, petty bourgeoisie, monks, intellectuals were entirely oppressed. We also noticed their dictatorship issues and their peasant class. Is that an accurate uh, recording or reflection of what was said in this interview. Um, again, with a caveat, that uh, this is not my translation, I would say generally, generally yes. I'm um, somewhat troubled by the use of the word oppressed. And before being confident, uh, uh, confirming the meaning, the sense, I'd actually like to see or hear that the Khmer doesn't quite track or could be correct, but it seems slightly peculiar. So, uh, without caveat, yes. Uh, Mr. Hebert, we're having a Khmer version printed off. <laughs> Perhaps if I can move on and then we'll come back to, uh, to this one. Um, I don't box. Can we go to the bottom of page 5? Same ERNs. ERN the dial, man. The four one six lines up from the bottom. From we will start from Rob this crown mark could have some dots wrong. Just setting the time, really. It's, it, it's talking the extract, and we in fact get the date two lines from the bottom. From 1973 onwards, they had conflict with Vietnam, so the person is talking about 1973. Can we go over your page, on to page 6, English 0035. Khmer 00379485 and French 00441418. Top of the page. So they were concerned about the remaining forces doing other activities. This time they mainly used security position and it was the security position which was relevant to class struggle and class dictatorship issues. This is what I would like to describe briefly. We noticed another point when monks and pagodas were gradually eliminated. Prisoners of war and defectors had previously been told that they were allowed to live in certain ways. This time, prisoners of war and defectors of Long Nol were wiped out. Belief and religion for both Cambodians and other ethnics were prohibited. Buddhism and Khmer superstition were prohibited as well. Again, can you confirm that that uh, is an accurate reflection of what you were told in this interview? Um, yes, but again with the same reservation. I, see, I can see, I can see the Khmer. Here. Uh, but it would be easier if I had a hard copy. The hard, the hard copy is coming now. Mr. President, can I please have a hard copy of the Khmer version? Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you.
Mr. Hedder, I'm going to go back to the first approach, because that was the first word you mentioned. The Khmer page, and these are in the top left hand, in dark bold type, the ERN numbers. It's, um, oppressed, I think you'll find, at the very top of Khmer page, 00379485. The sentence was, um, even middle class farmers, upper class farmers, petty bourgeoisie, monks, intellectuals were entirely oppressed in the official court translation. English ERN 00350204, page 5. Um, the, the, the nuance here is that um, one might one could possibly misread the English translation as meaning that these classes, classes mentioned uh, were to be oppressed by the Khmer Rouge. In, in fact, saying that they were among the classes who were oppressed by the exploiting classes of the old society. And the second part, the sentence I was interested in, this is on English page 6. ខ្មែរតំពរ 0037985 Um, yes, um, this is a phrase which I conventionally translate as swept cleanly away. Thank you, that's a phrase many of us are familiar with. Um, can I take you back to the English now, but have the Khmer hand? It's in the middle of page six. This is in, well, I've already given the ERN. Uh, we were ordered to fight at 1 a.m. on the 31st of December. It says 1974, but can you check the as to whether it's... Uh, yes, 31st of December 1974. And the war had to be over on the 30th of June 1975. So they held a meeting to realise attacks on every battlefield. Did they succeed? Generally speaking, gunfire was broken out on all battlefields on the 1st of January 1975 at 1 a.m. as planned. Again, can you confirm that an accurate reflection of what you were told in this interview? Yes. Still on the same page, still the same ERNs. During the attacks, Pol Pot estimated that victory would be achieved in February 
and he disseminated the information down to all districts and sectors. He ordered all districts and sectors to build houses for people to be evacuated from Phnom Penh or provincial towns to countryside. During that time, they announced that Phnom Penh dwellers were to be evacuated. So in February 1975, they disseminated the information to all districts and sectors to be housed, uh, to build houses for those soon to be come deportees. And I'll carry on because the next bit is also relevant. Nearly two months later, the country was liberated. In, no, I'm going to pause there. Can you confirm that that's an, uh, an accurate description of what you were told. Yes. I'm moving on to another general subject now. I'd like you to put that statement to one side, but we are coming back to it later on. The topic is command and authority structure. File 4. Tab three. Tab late bay. <coughs> you should have one page, is that correct? Look, Murta Kate and Madame Porte, Tam Thirty. E number E one three one stroke one stroke thirteen point three. This is an extract from your book entitled Racism Marxism. Labeling and genocide in Ben Kiernan's The Pol Pot Regime. You should have page 32 in bold at the top. It's talking about the concept of party center, and you state that it was inherited by the CPK from the Chinese and Vietnamese communists, and the footnote 48 states in Chinese and Vietnamese communist parlance. Center refers to the highest leading structures of party organizations and of the country's political authority in the state sphere, including the party central committee and its various departments, the central government and other administrative bodies at the central echelon. You then refer in footnote 48, and I can't pronounce them, but you Look, refer to a 1971 document in Look, Beijing, a Hanoi University Press document, document, document from 1986, and a Hanoi document from 1978. Can you confirm that you read those documents and that they were your source? Uh, yes. Mr. Header, in, in the document that you have looked at in Chinese, Vietnamese and Cambodian, have you ever encountered the term party center as the party central committee? Oh, sorry, I didn't see it. Um, the, I think 
the answer to that is that yes, but only in the sense that the party central committee is one of a number of bodies that could be described or could be referred to by this phrase, the center. The center refers to a level within the party hierarchy or structure and not necessarily to any specific body at that level, either all of them or some of them or one of them. So the phrase in and of itself, party center, uh, is somewhat ambiguous. Thank you. File 4, tab 4. So your existing file, tab 4. Document number P348, seven candidates. Can you please go to page 46? Uh, when I say page 46, you don't have the whole of the document, but if you look at the pages that you do have, they are paged in the top of the document. Do you have the page 46? Thank you. It's reference to the statutes, and you say this. The statutes declared that the central committee's duties included implementation of the party's lines throughout the country, giving instructions to all its subordinate zone, sector and municipal organisations and to the party organs, taking responsibility for various nationwide departments and administering and deploying cadre and party members within the party as a whole, while maintaining a clear and constant grasp on their biographies and political ideological and organizational stances and constantly educating and indoctrinating them in terms of politics, ideology and organization. We know the document very well. It has case uh, E3 number E3 stroke 214. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Um, we're reaching now a uh, topic of questioning uh, in which uh, we would require a ruling from the Chamber. Um, I have not an objection to the way of the phrasing of the question in particular. Um, Prosecution is referring to a book which is on the case file. Prosecution is asking uh, the witness, uh, presumably, uh, about the source um, in the footnote. However, this book is called Seven Candidates for Prosecution. Obviously, it has been written with a certain purpose in mind. And maybe the witness at one point will elaborate on the why on the reasons why he wrote this book. But obviously, the title of the book itself, Seven Candidates for Prosecution, suggests that the book was written with the intent to uh, present uh, evidence in relation to not only uh, Kim Sang Pan, but also our client. Um, so we have now here a situation that we have a witness who has an extensive role, uh, who played an extensive role in, in the investigation, now being asked questions about the book, which is in essence uh, uh, a plenary for prosecuting and uh, so, although not objecting in a technical sense as to the way questions were phrased, I do object uh, that we now get into a situation that this witness is basically um, talking about this book, why these people, uh, including our clients, should be prosecuted. So I would like to have a ruling um, on, of your chamber as to the, the lawfulness, so to speak, uh, in respect of questions to this witness about this specific book. 
Mr. President, Your Honours, can I make it plain? As I hope I did yesterday, that I will not be asking Mr. Header any opinions based on this book. This book has been admitted in evidence. Objections were submitted and ruled upon. It is on the case file. It has an E3 number. It is therefore, on the face of it, relevant and reliable. There may be a need for a ruling if I was stressing Opinion. I'm not. I'm continuing the practice that I have now undertaken for a day and an hour in accordance with the trial chamber's direction of reading statements from books and asking questions about sources. That will continue to be my practice throughout this examination and I ask please to proceed in the manner that I have already been conducting my examination. Can I add, I've not even asked the question yet. ແລະໄປໄປຈັກໄປສະໄດສໍາຫຼັດຈົນເຕືອລູກໄຕຈະກ້ອມ <coughs> Thank you, President. <coughs> the Chamber has decided that the objection is not sustained. Uh, first, the book, <coughs> excuse me, the book is on the case file and has been assigned an E3 number. Uh, and secondly, if the objection is to the probative value of the book, then that is a matter for the Chamber ultimately to determine. Thank you, President. How many versions are you aware of of these statutes? Um, I have a couple of originals. What I believe are originals in my possession. David Chandler, I presume, has one or the other 
the question is, are there alternate versions? Uh, if so, uh, I, I haven't been aware of that. Uh, and based on your factual research, not opinion, not speculation, when were these statutes adopted? Um, I'm sure I've been told somewhere along the line in interviews that it was January 1976. And I'm pretty sure there's also reference to that fact in revolutionary flag or revolutionary use, revolutionary youth from around this Do you remember when we were? Um, you were giving evidence in Cambodian communism about the 1960 Congress and adoption of statutes. Can you uh, confirm that statutes were featuring in 1960? Uh, yes, presuming we can believe what Pol Pot Nguyen Chia and others have said, they themselves have said as much. File 4, tab 1. Page 12. English ERN. Zero zero six six one four six six Khmer zero zero eight three zero seven seven five French zero zero seven nine two nine two five it's in reference if, if it helps everyone to footnote 64. Uh, sorry i should say reassessing in its short form e one nine zero point one point three nine eight to a great extent however the liquid the linkage between the centre and the district was mediated via zones and sectors. Leading zone and sector cadre came to Phnom Penh for regular meetings and special consultations with Pol and Nguyen. And there was also much written communication back and forth between the centre and the zones. Footnote 65 then references Kai Pok interview. And you go on to say, uh, this is in fact, sorry, in, in footnote 14, which will be back on page... On page five, so it's it's inserting here also footnote fourteen to give context to the Kai Pok interview. And so you say in an interview with the author brackets header on the twenty second of February two thousand and one in Siem Reap, Cambodia. Pok agreed to discuss evidence against himself and others on the condition that his remarks not be made public while he was alive. And then in terms of what he said, he conceded that as Secretary of the CPK North, brackets, later Central, close brackets, Zone Committee, he had implemented a CPK policy of killing Khmer Republic officials. 
initiated the arrest and ordered the execution of alleged traitors among CPK members subordinated to him and followed orders from Nguyen to assist in the arrest of other alleged traitors in the CPK ranks who he knew would be executed after interrogation by the CPK Security Service Headquarters, S21 in Phnom Penh. Pox admissions with regard to initiating arrests were corroborated in an interview by the author with the former third rank member of the North Zone Committee, Pich Jing, alias Tao, on the 14th to 15th of May 2001 in An Lung Ven, Cambodia. My first question is, is what you've stated an accurate reflection of what Kai Pok told you in the interview you had with him? Yes. Little bit more context. Kai Pok, Secretary of the CPK, North Later Central Zone Committee. A little bit more information but not a life history. Uh, yes, he was um, from around May 75, Secretary of the North Zone, later redesignated the Central Zone, um, a member of the Central Committee, um, through the end of the period of Khmer Rouge rule, fell somewhat out of favor with the top leadership after January 1979 and was eventually placed into a semi-retirement, broke away from the Khmer Rouge in the late 90s, I think it was 98, um, and was made a general officer in the government army. And this particular interview was, in fact, arranged for me by um, General Paul Saruan, who's currently uh, Commander in Chief, Supreme Commander of the Cambodian Armed Forces. Uh, Mr. President, subject to a direction or an application from the court, um, well, can I ask Mr. Head of the question, is the interview you had with Kai Pork recorded in any way? Um, handwritten notes only, no tape no where are the handwritten notes and could they be sent here today or over the weekend? Uh, I don't have them with me. They're somewhere in the UK, I suppose. If on the direction, if it was given by the President that you would be given any available resources here to assist in obtaining that, would it be possible? Um, the answer to that question is there are 45 filing cabinets scattered around various places in and around London. I don't know which filing cabinet they're in. Um, it wouldn't be easy. It would take time. Right, thank you.
The second interview that you mentioned, in other words, to use your phrase, Cox admissions with regard to initiating arrests, were corroborated in an interview with Pik Tien alias Tao. Um, how was that interview organised and how was it recorded? Um, uh, this this person was after January 1979 was Democratic Cambodia ambassador to China, um, and I met him in Beijing in late 1978. So he and I were acquainted. Um, in 2001, I approached him directly. Um, him, and, him and his wife directly in, in Long Vang, and he agreed to, to speak to me. Um, again, no tape recording, only handwritten notes in the same situation, I'm afraid, as with those of the interview of Kapok. And for completeness, one of the other sources that you gave in the footnotes was uh, the minutes of a quorum of the meeting on grassroots work 8th of March 1976. We're well familiar with this document, E3. Still in the document reassessing page 13, please, and it's in reference to footnotes 68 and 69. Uh, zone secretaries provided information to the center about the situation in their areas of responsibility, demonstrating that the zones were keeping track of all activities right down to the district level and assessing the zones' right and wrong experiences in implementation of party policies. And in support of that, there is reference to two telegrams. They are on our file E3-952 and E3-871. Now, Mr. Hedder, with telegrams as a body of information, Yes, forgive me, Mr. President. No, I'm, I'm going to give a little bit more detail. E3-952, Telegram 94, that was from Pok to Pol, the 2nd of April 1976, and E3-871, which is Telegram 21, of the 21st of March, 1976. The book is E1900.3. Sorry, I'll start again. E1900.1.39. It's on the subject of telegrams. Now, can you help us as to when you first got to see if we call it broadly CPK telegrams that relate to the DK period. Um, I think I got it roughly in the on the same book, E1900.1.398, it relates to footnote 70. According to the party statutes, zone party committees were to lead and implement policy down to the district level and below. And your sources are E3-214 statutes. You refer to Article 19, your translation. 
As Paul explained it, all problems were up to the party in each locality, but leading cadre of higher echelons must also involve themselves in local work. With zone cadre helping district cadre to direct it. He then referred to our document E3 slash 135, which is a report in the revolutionary flags of June 1976 and E3 slash 8, which was a collection of documents authored uh, ben Kiernan and Chandra Pol Pot plans for the future. I have two questions here. This is about policy going down to the district level and below. From the interviews and direct contact you had with interviewees, did you gather any information that this, in fact, had happened? Sometime. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the prosecutor is getting craftier and craftier in informing the questions in such a way that uh, is a question uh, uh, to a way. Um, but, um, lift the view of the question and it obviously a question to the opinion uh, of, of this witness. Um, we can all pretend today uh, uh, as we as we have have done done yesterday, uh, that these are questions to a witness, but uh, uh, we can all see that this question is nothing but a question to the solicitator of the opinion of the expert, well crafted. But that's in fact what we are doing today. That's why I object. Well, I thank Mr. Coppe for his compliment on my craft and professionalism. It's not opinion. Just say to somebody, "When the interview you had with a person face." The fact that you were directly involved in it, did you obtain factual information about this subject? I'm not asking for his opinion. I'm not asking him to speculate. I'm asking him, as I have, I think, on probably half a dozen occasions already, without objection, to say from the interviews you had, not what people told you, not speculating, not giving an opinion, can you help the court? This isn't expert evidence. It's not opinion. And I ask to be able to proceed. Mr. President, if I may briefly, briefly reply. If we were to treat Mr. Hedda as a real witness, we would ask what has this person told you? Now what we're doing is we're sort of asking the person to summarize the things that have been told by him or he has read the documents and then invited to be answered. Is that exactly what we're doing when we're asking an expert? So we can all pretend like I said that we are doing it, but we are doing it. Mr. President, my question was, what was the interviews and direct contact you had with interviewees? Did you gather any information that this happened? I wasn't asking about documents. And I did that for a deliberate reason. Interviews. 
ដោយរ៉េតនៅក្នុងកូលបំណងដូច្បាស់គឺបាត់សម្ភារការសម្ភារដោយផ្ទាល់គឺ បាទសិរិយមន្តនៅសម្ងាងហេតុនៃសិរិយមន្តនៅ <coughs> You confirmed an extract according to the party statutes, zone party committees were to lead and implement policy down to the district level and below. From the interviews you had and the direct contact you had with interviewees, did you gather any information that this had happened? From the, the interview, and indeed, summarizing in a sense, I think the most precise answer to that question is yes, the interviews generally describe the formal policy as being out here from the documentation, but at the same time, the interviews often indicated that formal policy and formal structures didn't operate as they were supposed to operate. So yes and no. Thank you. Still within the same document, Moving on to footnotes 71 and 72. It was up to the zone leadership to grasp the line of the party centre and ensure that districts and other localities followed it, which meant zone secretaries had the power to give instructions to all sectors and districts. And in respect of that, you refer to our document E3-8, which was a Pol Pot document, preliminary explanation before reading the plan by the party centre, 21st August 1976, and Telegram 15, with respect to beloved brother uh, Paul Pot. Um, can you confirm that those were the sources to support that statement in the book? Yes, they were. Thank you. Yes, they same document E190.139.8 In exercise of this authority, zone secretaries and other leading zone cadre 
ជាងទំព័រលេខចិត្តសបីនៅក្នុងការ and there's another document. I'll read it in. It's not, it's not on our case file. It's 1.6. Commander of the Standing Committee of Zone 203 sends to sector district, sub-district level party leaders 26th of November 1975. And also 1.64, Sector 23 sends to district districts and sector military headquarters, and the date of that document is the 22nd of October 1975. In brackets, after each of those documents, there are the letters B and D and N. Now, excuse me if you've already refer to BDN, but what is BDN in terms of these sources? Um, it's a, to my understanding, it's a cataloging number from the Vietnamese archives. And how did you have access to this information to be able to rely on it in the book? Um, that's explained in another chapter, um, which I saw the second go to. It's in the text. It's in the folder. Uh, but basically, the story is that I was given a set of Vietnamese language documents, uh, Vietnamese language indexes, two documents by Christopher Gosha, who's a scholar who works on Vietnamese, Cambodian, and mainland Southeast Asian historical relations. Uh, these were copies of documents that he, a fellow scholar, ដែលគាត់ធ្វើបន្តមកពីបញ្ញវណ្ណដែលបានទទួលការសិក្សាដែលវៀតណាមគេរក្សាទាំងអស់នោះគឺគេបកប្រែ Yes, it's the same set of 
going to help you to have file 2 available. The topic is enemies. Thank you, Mr. President. File Document number can you please go to page 66? English RN 0017057. Khmer 0032 Through seven seven and French zero zero six four nine zero one nine through two zero. It's at the bottom of page sixty six for you, Mr. Header. And there's reference to number thirty three. March the sixteenth, so nineteen eighty. My route, location, source, ex-soldier from Ong Snor area. If we move on to the next page, I've already given the ERN. This statement from this person. In 1972, there were lots of Lon Nol soldiers captured, about 500 of them. All were executed, none were forgiven. Can you confirm that that's an accurate recording of what you were told in this interview? Thank you, Mr. President. File 60. When we say soldier, the the reference just says ex soldier from Ong Snul area. But I wonder is he was um, we we know uh, if I can take you to page sixty seven. ERN's already given. There's a reference to as a former Long Nol soldier he was kept careful track of. And towards the bottom of the page, as a formal non former non Lol soldier, I was under watch by Norkobal. It would keep track of my movements and listen to what I said. Is that correct? Yes, and the distinction here is that in Khmer Rouge parlance, the word soldier was normally used to refer to Khmer Rouge public military personnel and refer to their own military personnel as combatants. Um, the same collection, so we're still in E3 slash 1714, page 43. Do you have interview number 23, page 43? Interview number 23, March the 10th, 1980. Location, Sakkao, 
Source Um Samang from Tambon 21 Eastern Region. And he says in the second paragraph, sorry, I should give the ERNs, English ERN 00170734. Khmer ໂດຍຕົ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ້ນຕ
Can you can play, uh, please explain to the court again, Some just very briefly, who Non Suan was? Uh, um, a veteran communist from the late 40s or early 50s, uh, who after April 1975 was the chairman of the Agriculture Committee at the center level. Uh, the equivalent of the uh, Minister of Agriculture. Thank you. Your page 28, English RM 0017, in Tambon 25, we were told to prepare for evacuees from Phnom Penh only on the 18th of April 1975. We were instructed to prepare food, water and lodging for the evacuees to slaughter animals to feed them and give them co-op rice. Each district was assigned a quota of a number of evacuees they should accept. We were told that their presence would be temporary. We were told that if the evacuees caused the burden in the co-ops, they should go to the Kum or district committees to ask for surplus to solve the problem. Among those evacuees, the former Long Nol soldiers Especially the officers were considered were to be considered enemies. Is that an accurate record of what you were told in this interview? Yes, and in conjunction with what's in the remainder of the paragraph. Same folder. Some new one. Can on some number eight. Tab six. Tab the primary. Document number E three. E bay slash three nine zero one zone. I don't want to give the name for the moment uh, because I, uh, it's being checked, uh, but this interview, E3-390. Can you just confirm that on the front page, the interviewer, Steve Heather? Uh, uh, I'm just checking to see whether there might be a mistake in the attribution of the name of the interviewee. Should you give me a couple of បាទអរគុណសាក្សីអរគុណតំណាងខាងពេញណាហើយលើនេះដល់ពេលសំរំសំរំមកសម្រាក់ហើយហើយមានការសម្រាក់ម្ខេញនាទីចាប់ក្រ